Let's take a look at some of the new importing and exporting options found in Cubase Pro 12. When we go to our file menu to import, we could choose tracks from project. And now when we do this, we could import signature and tempo tracks from the project. There's been some new logic applied to the signal routing when creating stems of audio tracks feeding groups that have like an aux send on them. So let's take a listen to a typical example. So let's say I have my drum group here. Now in the drum group, my snare has reverb going by an aux send. My guitar groups is consist of four different guitar tracks that each have reverb. So if I wanted to create a stem to make the sound of all of my drums together with the effects and all the guitars with the effects, we would go to our file to export audio mix down. And as we do this, we would click on, on the channel selection. We would choose multiple. We would choose our guitar and drum group and we could choose different effects processing. So we have our groups in sends. We could do just inserts in the channel strip or the master outputs. Now in previous versions, when we did this, the result would be for our drum group would sound like this, where there's no reverb. And our guitar group, again, has no reverb. So, but I thought I chose to include the effect sends. So, but the logic of this is that when we do our export audio mix down, one that the effects are being sent to the stereo output. The groups are never being routed to the effects. So as a workaround, some people would take the effects channels and for the returns, route it to the group. And sometimes if other tracks were feeding that same effect, we would get kind of a, reverb cross bleed that could sound like this. So we have the reverb on the drum, but the same reverb that the guitar was using is now blended in. So while it, there is a logic to it, it may not be what people and customers want to achieve easily. So what many composers would do is for each, each group have a dedicated reverb. And on a large project, that could take a lot of CPU cycles so that there wouldn't be cross-contamination with the reverbs when exporting stems. But now there's a new logic in Cubase where it's going to be smart enough when we do our export audio mix down that if it sees that those particular tracks are going to different send effects that as we export the file, that the sends will automatically be included. And we did this, I did the export and it's going to create new audio tracks. And as we listen to these tracks, we were not going to have any cross contamination with reverb and we'll just listen to our guitar, our drum group first. So we can hear the reverb. Let's go to our guitar group with its reverb. So with new functionality is a lot more practical. Dealing with side chains has always been problematic as well. So if we have tracks like a synth bass here, and we wanted this to be side chain input for a compressor from another track, exporting these was always problematic as well because the export would always think of this, the track being exported as being soloed in place and didn't really take into account other tracks that may affect that. So let's listen to this scenario. We're going to have a sidechain input from the top track into the bass. So now as I export or even do a render in place, so I'll just come here, do a render in place. The sidechain will automatically take effect on the rendered file, as you can see. So it's another great feature with that. Many times we may be working with different files that are kind of not really in a timeline. We'll call them kind of a non-linear or non-musical. We just may use one track as a holder for many different files. Let's say different sound effects that we're working on or sound design. 
So as we're doing this, we may want to do processing and editing and then export all these different events. And we don't want to necessarily do this one by one. And Cubase has great functionality where we could select these and put cycle markers on all of the events and export. But that could be uh, that could be problematic having to insert a cycle marker for each event. So now we could come to our file menu, go to export, and we could export selected events. We could choose to have these as separate events, as block events, as one event. We could also have these be dry with the channel settings, the complete signal path. We could add a tail. We could add custom names. We could have different naming schemes as well as where the files will be saved to. So instead of having to manually export all these, you could select all the events and, and export the selected events all at one time. So you could see that as these new improvements with importing and exporting into Cubase Pro 12 can really speed up your workflow.